Well, I'll tell you, I guess if I was a fish, there's no place that I'd rather be. <laughs> if the fish aren't happy to be caught, then why do they wag their tails when I pull them out of the water? <laughs> Glad you could join us on Inside Track, where today you'll see... How the West was finally won. The story of men and women who blazed the trails of a new frontier. Gosh, Duke, I wonder if cowboys could have used me. Sure, Weaver, once you had acquired a taste for oats and hay. Honey, that's not the Old West, and you know it. Look, I didn't start all this. Yeah, but that's what you get for horsing around, eh? How have you know that that's near an eye riding those horses on a kibbutz in Israel? Israel, eh? Did you use an English saddle or a western? What's the difference? Well, the western saddle has a horn. No, no, I didn't need a horn. You see, that was my first time on a horse, and there was no way I was going to ride into any traffic. <laughs> Got 10 cents for a cup of coffee. No, but don't worry about me. I'll be all right. <laughs> don't ignore the guy who asked you for 10 cents for a cup of coffee. Give it to him. Then follow him and find out where they still sell coffee for 10 cents. <laughs> you should ask for manners instead of money. I asked for what I thought you had the most of. <laughs> the easiest way to make ends meet is to get off your own. Hey, did I borrow $10 from you yesterday? Nope. OK. 
careless of me. Can you give it to me now? Hey, Duke, if you had $10 and I asked for some money to buy a hot dog and a milkshake, how much would you have left? $10. <laughs> the man asking for a loan is usually left alone. Unless, of course, he happens to be a kibitznik, a hearty brand of people who work strictly for one another and their country, the state of Israel. On a kibbutz, no one owns any property or gets paid for his work. Rather, each member shares equally in the daily chores in return for room and board. A type of communal farm, the kibbutz represents the dedicated spirit of the Israeli people in its purest form. Dramatically wedged between the infamous Golan Heights and the Sea of Galilee is Kibbutz Ha'an, an unlikely stop for an Italian on a stallion. <laughs> Here I am on a kibbutz. Now, a kibbutz is a four-legged... No, I'm just kidding. This is a horse. Now, the horse and I are standing on a kibbutz. That's a unique brand of communal farms here in Israel. Now, situated between the Sea of Galilee and the Golan Heights is Hanon, one of 240 kibbutz settlements here in Israel. Now, on this kibbutz, the people work voluntarily to help each other and all of Israel. Now, sitting beside me here is Nir Parley. He is a kibbutznik. Now, that's right. Now, you heard it right, folks. A kibbutznik who was born on this farm. As an independent settlement, the kibbutz maintains much of the flavor of the old frontier, with some slight differences. Now, a guardhouse in the Middle East? Well, that speaks for itself. I mean, they aren't built for spotting icebergs. And believe me, these folks have faced their share of outlaw games. You see the bunker up there? Oh, up there on the Golan Heights? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. For a six day war, the Syrians shooting every day on the kibbutz. Is that right? For, for how long? 20 years. Oh, what's this out here? Field of peanuts. A field of peanuts? Yeah. So that's why Jimmy Carter likes Israel. <laughs> <laughs> We wish to remind you that Jimmy Carter has been proven a man of exceptional willpower. He can, in fact, stop eating after one peanut. Hey, Patty, how are peanuts? No, thanks. They're fattening. What makes you think peanuts are fattening? Have you ever seen an elephant? <laughs> hey, Duke, why do elephants have so many wrinkles? Have you ever tried to iron one? <laughs>
Mm. Hey, Nir, what are you doing here so early? I reckon every day at 4 o'clock we are going to end. 4 o'clock? Are you crazy? No, all the people in this kibbutz come to help to pack in every day at 4 o'clock before the sun goes up. I mean, the chickens aren't even up at 4. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it, looks, uh, it looks pretty good there. Uh, Take one. Okay. Not too bad. Do you grow anything else around here? Yeah, I'm going to show you. Okay. Uh, here's a clump. You want to you cut that out for me? Thank you. Thanks. So don't leave. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you guys talking about? I asked uh, what she's doing. Oh. I fixed the leaves because it's a baby banana tree and we want it to grow up and to be big. See, Dili, what's this kibbutz scene like anyway? We share together and we help each other. I work here and somebody works in the kitchen and we get money and the kibbutz give us what we need. Do you like to live here? Yeah, I love it. It's my home. Do you have any kibbutzim in Canada? No, we don't have kibbutzes, but we do like to kibbutz around, I tell you. Direct off a few minutes to go to the grapefruit. Okay, take him. Excuse me, is that all you do? Yeah, I used to work only in the grapefruit. This is the way we share the work in the kibbutz. Everyone work in one part of the kibbutz. And so we get experience in it. That's the way we can change this bad land to a good land so we can grow food on it. And where do you get the water to water all this land? Oh, we have our lake over here, Sea of Galilee, and we source the water into the fields. And Frank, you must know that 4% of Israelis are living in Kibbutzim, but 50% of the food is produced by people who are living in Kibbutzim. Is that right? Wow. Oh, look, it looks like we're back to horses, so we might as well get going now. Shalom, Beta. See you. Unlike Nir, Beta wasn't raised on the kibbutz, but he's typical of the Israelis who volunteer to become pioneers. Selfless, dedicated people who work this land to serve their country. Like most Israelis, I found the kibbutzniks to be pretty good sports. We finished uh, school. Well, why stand around here? Let's get in there and start playing then. Come on, let's go. Let's play some of this okay, kibbutz basketball. Let's roll. of the kibbutz is quite plain and simple. Nothing fancy, just a few cabins down by the lake. In fact, it reminds me a lot of summer camp. This is my home. This is where the people live for all the... And out of the old subway station, why, here comes Beta. Wait a minute. What subway station? <laughs> what is that? Oh, it's Bam Shaka. We used to protect us from the Syrians. Mm -hmm. They used to shut us by artillery or to come to attack with the airplanes. 
What keeps you going? I mean, what does this kibbutz mean? Oh, it's mean Hag Shema. Uh, pardon? It's the Hebrew expression for, from each uh, according to his ability, yeah. to each according to his need. Oh, in other words, sharing. Yes, we share everything. You might say that this is an unusual way of horsing around, but I tell you, the Sea of Galilee, it's nice. Hold on, here we go. And I tell you, my horse just wanted to bring me for a closer look. <laughs> Near here, as you can see, is hefty, and you have to be when you work on a kibbutz. Here, everybody works for each other more than yourself. Let's bring it around here a bit. <laughs> Now, me, a kibbutznik? Shh. No, I couldn't cut it. I mean, I can hardly pronounce the word. You see Galilee? Well, I'll tell you, if I was a fish, there's no place I'd rather be. Now, that's what I call fishful thinking. <laughs> Frank, it's good to see that you're back from the kibbutz. Has this experience changed your attitude towards work at all? Well, I believe that work makes people happy, and since I'm already happy, I unselfishly give up my share to others. <laughs> Frank, about how many of the young people speak English? Uh, there's a lot of people that, uh, uh, a lot of young people, the young people mostly uh, know how to speak English. Once you start getting into the older uh, generation, uh, they don't know it. So I'd say that uh, most of the young people do. Um, what kind of educational system do they have in the kibbutz? Uh, they, uh, on, the, on the kibbutz, they have uh, small schools where they start to raise the kids. Uh, I think we'd equivalent it to uh, uh, kindergarten, and then they just uh, grow up from, from, from there uh, and keep on going uh, up in, in the school system. Frank, as a Christian, when you were swimming in the Sea of Galilee, what were your personal feelings knowing and believing that Jesus walked that water 2,000 years ago? Uh, that he got wet too. <laughs> that was a that was a pretty amazing feeling for me. Uh, when we got there, I'm, that, when we got right to the shores, that's the first thing I wanted to do was to get into that water. Um, but one uh, afternoon, I remember sitting on the shore and just watching and and thinking about that, and that was really amazing to be able to read in the Bible, just turn the pages, read it, and then look out, and there it was. So it, for me, it was really thrilling to uh, to go into it. Frank, are the people always as friendly and cooperative as they appear? Uh, yeah. When uh, we got there, we, we told them what we wanted to do, uh, what we wanted to film, and um, just to show how they lived and everything. And they, were, they, they went right to it. They, uh, whatever we asked them, they, uh, they allowed us to do. And uh, they were really cooperative with us. If we asked them that we wanted to do something, they said, fine, sure. So they were really cooperative, yeah. <laughs>
I feel like everyone takes advantage of me. Ah, don't worry about it. It's perfectly normal. Really, Doc? What a relief. How much do I owe you? How much do you have? <laughs> Waiter, I can't eat this food. Call the manager. I'm sorry, madame. He cannot eat it either. <laughs> hey, Lister, can you give a guy a bite? I don't bite myself, but if you like, I'll call my dog. <laughs> If you help a man who's in trouble, he'll never forget you. Especially the next time he's in trouble. <laughs> Hi, Frank. Hi. Do you think I could borrow a book from your library? Uh, yeah. But I have a rule that any book taken from my library must be read in my house. <laughs> see ladies stand on buses. So do you give them your seat? No, I close my eyes. <laughs> Hello, may I borrow your lawnmower? Sure, but I've got a rule that any lawnmower of mine that's borrowed must only be used on my lawn. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed today's show. See you all again next week on Inside Track. for the Inside Track cast and crew arranged through the Holiday Inn Worldwide Reservation System. 